I hate the sun. It's, it's really killing me today. I literally just spent the best part of an hour setting lights up because it was so dark in here when I started filming, only for the clouds to part, the sun to come out, and we have to put them all away again <laughs> so I could laugh or cry. Let's see what happens, shall we? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So welcome to November Favourites and Fails. Now this video is very kindly sponsored by Unique You. If you don't know Unique You, they are a fragrance subscription website. Quit at any time, you can pause at any time, but you pay a monthly fee and you get a fragrance of your choice every month in one of these gorgeous little eight mil samples. So this is about 120 sprays. They carry all of my absolute favorite niche brands like Mansera, Anisio, Zerzhov, Parfums de Mali, loads more fragrance brands that you just cannot get your nose to very easily. So Unique You allows you to actually try and test these niche fragrances out. You just choose the ones that you're interested in receiving and each month you will receive an eight mil taster uh, sample size of your choice of fragrance. On your first month, you will also receive a travel case. And you can choose from all different colors and on your first month, you'll receive your travel case with your fragrance. So each month after that, you can mix and match and choose which scent to take with you. They're perfect for travel. Just pop it in and you can, you are ready to go. I always travel with these wherever I go. Saves me taking a very expensive breakable bottle of fragrance with me. If like me, you will love to try new fragrances or you're trying to learn what fragrances you do and don't love. The website is amazing at actually teaching you about notes and helping you choose and decide what type of fragrances you love and you get to try a new one every month. So if you're looking for your new signature fragrance or you're just getting into fragrance and you want to try some of these before you fork out two, three or even 400 pounds on these fragrances without ever having tried them on yourself and seeing how they perform on you, on your skin chemistry. This is a perfect way of doing it without spending too much money and they are offering us 50% off with my code for your first month so you can give it a go and see how you like it. So I chose four fragrances from Unique You to give a try and they picked two for me that they thought that I would like. So I'm gonna give you a very quick review of each of these six fragrances. So so first up, Parfums de Mali's Herod. Now this is one that Unique You absolutely saved me my money on because I 100% would have purchased this. This was on my to buy list before I gave it a try. And it's not that I don't like it, I love it. This has a lot of my favorite notes in it, but the thing is it's just so similar to other fragrances I have. So actually getting to try this made me realize I just don't need it. It really reminds me of Angel's Share. It really reminds me of Ojean from the same brand, which I love but I already own and I just felt like actually I don't need this it's not different enough to what I already have so that was money saved by getting to try this first. Next up a fragrance I chose just because I was nosy about it and it's not really typically one that I would lean towards or would have chosen to purchase but I just really wanted to try it for myself and it's the Parfums de Mali's Oriana their most recent fragrance release. The bottle of this definitely caught my eye but the description of the notes it just sounded too sweet, too feminine for my typical preference, but I still wanted to try it because I heard lots of reviews comparing it to Killian's Love, which if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I shattered my full bottle of that recently and it was heartbreaking. Now, Love, again, not typically my type of scent, but one that I just like to have if I'm having a sweet moment, I like to have that option there. And the reviews are absolutely right. This is very reminiscent of Love, but I actually prefer this because it's just that hair bit less sweet. There are similarities. It does have that marshmallow note in there. It is a sweeter, more feminine fragrance, but it's just a hair less sickly sweet. So actually I was pleasantly surprised by this one. Next up, one that I have been curious about and wishing to smell for the longest time, and this is Rehab from Anisio. Anisio, one of my favorite fragrance houses, but one that is ultimately impossible for me to find in any shop anywhere for me to actually get my nose to and see what I think for myself. This has very mixed reviews, so I've been very nervous just to 
buy a full bottle straight off the bat because it's very divisive. It's a love-hate one. I love this. This absolutely went straight on my to-buy list. It's beautiful. It's so soft and smooth and rich and musky. And there's just something so unique about it. Like with all Initio fragrances, it's just so smooth and really just intriguing. Like you just can't quite place any of the notes because they're so well blended, but it's stunning. And I will absolutely purchase this one. And it really wasn't one I ever thought I would purchase before I got to try it. Next up, another one that Unique You has saved me a lot of money by getting to try it first, because this was again, one that was absolutely on my to buy list before I tried it. And this is Naxos by Zerzhov. This is a very famous, very popular fragrance. And I see why it performs incredibly amazing sillage, amazing longevity, but it's just not for me. I thought this would be smokier, spicier, but on me it is quite lavendery. And that's what I read in the reviews that on some people this pulls really, really strong lavender and I'm one of those people. So for me, this was money saved. By trying this first, I saved myself hundreds of pounds. And now for the two fragrances that Unique You chose for me, and clearly they know me better than I know myself because these were my two favorite fragrances of all six of these and I never would have tried either of these if not for Unique You. So first up, this is Ani by Nishane. This is again a very famous fragrance apparently when I've looked at reviews, but I'd never heard of it and I've never tried the brand before, but oh, this is gorgeous, very sexy. Again, looking at the note list, it's not one I would have picked up and thought to try, but it's so beautiful. It's just such a compliment bomb. Everybody is going to love this. It's very easy to wear. It's very office friendly. It's going to probably be suitable for any season and any occasion. A very versatile scent. And now for the absolute pick of the bunch for me. And again, one that Unique You chose for me not a brand or house that I've ever even heard of before, not a fragrance that I was even on my radar. And this is Delice by M. Mikalev. Now, I have never heard of the house. I am still fairly new getting into niche fragrances. I've still got a lot to learn. I definitely never heard of this fragrance, but oh my God, this is it for me. My favorite of the whole bunch, definitely a full bottle purchase for me. It's just so sexy, sweet but not in a gourmand way, not in a cloying way, a rich, spicy, very, very oudy. Again, an oud is not a note that I thought I liked. I'd never really smelt an oud that I've enjoyed. It's not a note I look for, but in here, I became an oud person. So it just goes to show that actually by trying all these fragrances, there were some I thought I'd love and I didn't, some I've never heard of that became absolute favorites. And it was just really helpful to actually try before I was spending hundreds of pounds on a bottle that I really don't know if I'm going to like or not. So thank you so much to Unique You for sponsoring this video. And all the details, if you want to have a look at the website, will be in the description box. So now for the makeup and first, up, let's talk about this Natasha Denona Glam Palette. Finally, I can talk about this one. It's been a while. I actually recorded this for my October favorites, thinking that it was going to have been out by then, but it wasn't. So yeah, this is just such a beautiful palette. I love everything about this palette. I just think it's perfect for travel and all of the shadows are gorgeous. I did think about picking up the light palette, but it's just taking so long to come back into stock that I may have lost interest. But this one for me is just, it's very flexible. I feel like you can use all of these shadows and get a really smoky date night look, halo eyes, something stunning, really rich. Or you can just literally use a bit of the transition shade and even the highlight and get a really daytime friendly, quiet, soft glam look. So it's actually much more versatile than it may look. But the formulas in here are just top notch. I love the packaging. I love the whole idea and I really enjoy playing with it. Next up, these NARS Air Matte Lipsticks. These were sent to me in PR and I absolutely love these. These are like a moussey texture. My absolute favorite is which shade of this? Surrender is the name of it. They give you a really crisp application and they're quite buildable, which is unusual for these sort of liquid mattes, but these don't dry down fully, fully, fully. They kind of leave a little bit of a soft, 
texture on the lips so they're not as harsh as some of these liquid mattes are they're really quite nice and comfortable and but still really long wearing and they don't transfer everywhere they're not completely like if you had a drink of tea or a drink of a, from a glass you're going to leave a little bit of something but you'll still have a full application on your lip that's kind of where they sit there like that long wearing but not bulletproof which is good for me because bulletproof means a problem this is morocco and this is surrender these are my two favorite shades i gave a couple of these to my sister and she is absolutely obsessed with them she loves liquid mattes much more than me but these like she said they're so much more comfortable and they don't really super dry out your lips and make them start flaking off and this one is dolce vita and again i feel like they look different when you swatch them when i sort of saw these tubes i was a bit like mm, this isn't going to be one i like but actually the color is beautiful and they're just so soft like they make your lips look cushiony they're lovely next up let's talk about this primer from nars so i use this in my trying new makeup video i've used it a couple of times since this is the soft matte primer i really like this so much more than i thought given it has the m word in there i didn't think it was going to be for me but if you watch that video as you will have seen it doesn't actually mattify my skin and suck the life out of me it actually just kind of keeps a really smooth refining effect on the skin without being powdery or really silicony it just kind of goes on feeling like a lotion but it just stops you getting shinier throughout the day and it makes your foundation stay put and stop sort of anything bad happening throughout the day like creasing or just moving around and i really really like this one i think it's really really nice feels nice on the skin looks beautiful under foundation no pilling which is a win and i've been really enjoying it pleasantly surprised with that one next up another product that I also tried in my trying new makeup video is the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. This is not one I've ever been interested to pick up or try. It's been around for a long time, but I've just never tried it, never really been tempted to. Again, it has the M word in there and it's like a pot concealer. So again, not one that I would have thought I would like, but it's a really nice concealer. I don't like it as much as my Pat McGrath, I will say that, but the coverage is great. You need the tiniest amount on a brush and it applies beautifully seamlessly it's very smooth doesn't crease doesn't move throughout the day you don't lose coverage throughout the day it's just a gorgeous concealer the reason I don't like it quite as much as the Pat McGrath is I feel like it looks a smidgen more dry in my under air eyes than the Pat McGrath does so that's the only slight mm. but Otherwise, so I probably wouldn't recommend, recommend this for dry skins or someone with just a drier under eye, but it's beautiful. Would be perfect as an eyeshadow base on your lids. It's very, very nice, but yeah, I didn't quite, it's not quite pushing the Pat McGrath. But nonetheless, a very nice concealer. Next up, let's talk about this Hermes highlight. Unfortunately, as again, you would have seen in that trying new makeup video, I've fallen head over heels in love with this highlight it's the highlight i have on today it just gives me gorgeous glowing luminosity in such a smooth flattering way without there being shimmer or glitter without it being too much it's the perfect color it melts into the skin it's a joy and a treat to use and i just love it it's just so pretty and natural but in a kind of super glowy way. It just looks like wet looking is what I like. I don't like that shimmery, metallic. I like a glow, a glossiness to the skin. And this is perfect for my preferences. It tickles my pickle. That's what I'm saying. Next up, the eyeshadow that I'm wearing today, which isn't, again, not a, not a new not a new palette, but something I picked up in the Black Friday sale from Pat McGrath. And it's this bad boy. This is, what's it called? Ritualistic Rose, okay? I've had my eye on this for a while, Wasn't had no interest in it when it first came out. Let me give you a close up. There she is, there she is. Pretty. When this first came out, that was not even on my radar, no interest in it, not my type of thing didn't know what to do with it, all shimmer shades, what am I going to do with that? And then I saw a few looks from Patty, Miss Patty Alonso. I mean, that girl can do eye shadow, let me tell you. And it just caught my eye. So it's kind of been on my interested 
intrigued list ever since I saw Patty's look that she did with it on her Instagram and yeah I wanted to give it a try so I just waited for sale for it to come along waited for Pat's Black Friday and then I snapped it up and I am in love it's just so pretty so pretty so it is an all shimmer quad all of these are pretty pretty shimmery okay there's not even something I could say is almost the satin they're all shimmery shadows but you could absolutely do a full look with it and it's just oh. some of the prettiest shadows I own from the brand it's stunning gorgeous quite unique and just fun it's so fun and it's so easy to work with it's just stunning if you don't like fallout I'd probably steer clear because like you do get a fair bit of fallout with these shadows. What was that? Who knows? But yeah, if you are allergic to fallout, I would steer clear, but it's just so pretty and I just really, really love it. So thank you, Patty. Thank you. I would never have picked it up if not for Patty. Next up, a brush that changed the game for me this month. This is the Nishi Pro from Sonia G, her newest brush release. I know this sold out like instantly in the first couple of hours, but she has said it is coming. It's on the way. More are being made as we speak. It is a delight, an utter delight. I love a sculpting bronze. I like to keep my bronzer away from the center of my face, around my hairline, high up on my cheekbones. I like to sculpt and this is perfect for that. I saw Sonia's blog post on this and she was talking about how the contact point, so where it touches product, is just in the middle. It doesn't pick up product on the edges which gives you that bit of blend room. And that's what I think makes the difference with this brush. It keeps things high up. It keeps things away from the center of my face and it allows me that space there to blend onto the cheek without putting product everywhere the brush touches. I think it's genius. It's so soft. It's my favorite bronzer brush I've ever tried. And I feel like I will never use another one. That's how much I like. Next up, something a little surprise -a for me this month, and it's these little lid lusters from Victoria Beckham. Not something I'm a big fan of. These single eyeshadows, these kind of, these types of formulas. Not really, I'm, I'm more of a palette girl, but this was just so pretty. And I have kind of been on the lookout for this type of shadow where I can just do a bit of bronzer and this on the lid and it looks stunning and like I've done a lot, but it's taken me, you know, approximately two minutes and 10 seconds. And that's exactly what this is. The shine is stunning. It's like, it's not, or the way I use it, it's not fully opaque. It's like that really soft, subtle, shimmery, wet looking lid. It's just so pretty that I instantly ordered another shade. I ordered the shade Honey from Cult Beauty in the sale. All about saving the money, honey. <laughs> I'm sorry. But the formula is so good, I was really surprised. I thought these were cream, which is why I've never tried them before, but they're actually a powder and a beautiful powder. I got no fallout with this shade. It was so just easy and simple and a one and done, and probably my favorite ever one and done shadow now. We've had a good month, guys. And now I've got a few lippies to share with you. First up, this lipstick from Guerlain. This packaging just does it for me. But a lovely, festive beauty of a lip shade. What's she talking about? I mean, it's just very, very festive, very pretty, perfect for holiday season and very Christmassy. And what a brilliant gift as well, because it's just so... So, oh my days, lost five years of my life. But it just screams Christmas present to me. So, you know, another video to show your other half. Next up, this lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of those just random drops from her. This is the shade Famously Pink. So I think this was like an exclusive for her members that suddenly it just popped up for us to purchase and oh I love it I love it it's a little light for me to wear on its own but it works beautifully with pink venus lip liner that is an absolute dream I've also worn it with a fair lip liner from Lisa Eldridge and I will say I'm not sure it's definitely more coral to me than pink which for me is great a very good thing but for lots of people I feel like 
a lot of people think Charlotte Tilbury's lipsticks or or it's tr it's true they don't think it it's true a lot of Charlotte Tilbury's lipsticks are peachy coral orange orange running orange toned what am I trying to say you know what I mean they run peachy coral a lot of her lipsticks there's very few that are sort of real pinks and lots of people are d crying out for pinks pure pink tones from her and this I feel like is not going to do that for you I feel like it is quite again quite corally corally pink as a as opposed to like a pink 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 a pinkity pink you know do you know who knows? Next up, a big surprise from L'Occitane. This was in my advent calendar and I don't know, I don't know that I had any expectations, but they weren't high ones, I don't think. This is one of their balm, their lip balm formulas. One of my favourites ever. You can barely see it there. It's very sheer. This colour is 010. It's their Fruities and it's just so hydrating and comfortable on the lips and it just gives the perfect amount of something this for me is perfect handbag material okay perfect for the school run whack just something on your lips minimal makeup day it's a lovely formula and I was very pleasantly surprised I really didn't have high expectations but I really really like it and last but not least the lipstick that I have on today along with its accompanying liner and it's from Lisa Eldridge again it's Velvet Dragon when I went back and ordered the foundation when I ordered a new shade I was like I can't just order one thing from Lisa Eldridge that would be a travesty so I decided to pick up Velvet Dragon because a lot of you guys were surprised I didn't purchase this when it initially came out a lot of you have told me that I'd love it it's a very popular shade and a unique shade from the brand which is what I'm all about like if you're going to spend money spend it on something you don't already have that's what I already say I mostly say that not really when it comes to lipsticks but I do sometimes think it if that helps but again it is a stunning pretty unique shade it's like kind of a red kind of an orange it's got some brownie tones in there who really knows it's festive without it being like a bright Christmas red but I feel like velvet ribbon is very like what you think of when you think of like a Christmassy red or just a red in general this isn't quite that this is like maybe you're on the naughty list it's that kind of red there's just something a bit spicier about it I absolutely love it. It goes beautifully with the liner as well. It's the, the liner is that hair bit deeper than the lipstick. I absolutely live for it. It's gorgeous. I find it more wearable. It's kind of more in the house of like Cinnabar, as in if you're scared of reds, but you kind of, you want to step through, step towards the red door. But bright reds really scare you. I think this is more I think this is more wearable, less intimidating for red phobes, which for a long time was me. It was me, I promise you. So now for the fail of the month, we have a big fail this month, guys. We have a, a big one. We have a big old failaroo. And it's a surprising one. It's one that I thought I was going to love, but instead I did not. And it's Lancome's Monsieur Big Extra Black. Let me tell you how disappointed I was by this. <laughs> now, I thought being a big Long Commissure big fan, that was like my ride or die mascara for years. I bought like 68 tubes of that stuff before some other mascaras came along and slightly knocked it off its perch. So I thought this was going to be Monsieur Big, but just blacker because it's called Monsieur Big Extreme Black. I feel like that's a fair assumption that I made. Apparently not. This is completely different to Monsieur Big. The bristles are different. It's like, I don't understand it. I actually was so confused that I purchased a regular Monsieur Big because I thought maybe I'm not remembering that one right. I hadn't tried it for a while, so I bought it to try. They're nothing alike. So here is the wand for this horrible mascara. It's just very spiky, bristly, and not in a good way. I just, I hate the way this makes my lashes look. It makes them look a bit spidery. They're not really uniform. It's messy. I just don't like anything about it. Yes, it is black, but it's, I didn't find it to be especially black at all. And I find it to be nowhere near 
as good as Monsieur Big and really not similar. It doesn't give me those huge, big, fat, chunky, dramatic lashes. It really just gives me a nightmare and I don't like anything about it. Apart from maybe the packaging is quite nice. That's the nicest thing I have to say. I think it was, it was awful. I hated it. I d hate's a strong word. I strongly disliked it. Okay, and I was very disappointed because I really had high hopes and I thought it was maybe going to be a new love of my life. It's Monsieur Big, but it's just that bit blacker, which is one of the things that kind of beat out Monsieur Back. What? I'm so angry I can't even remember words anymore. But in comparison to like the Dark Star Mascara from Pat McGrath and the Bite Beauty Mascara, the, one of the reasons they beat out Monsieur Big is because they're that bit blacker and therefore just show every part of your lash in real drama so that's what I thought this was gonna like you know Monsieur Big was gonna be back on the list but th what is this it's not what I asked for or wanted and I don't understand it so there you have it those are all of my faves and fail for the month of November I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye, bye.